So we fixed it. See, this year we had one goal in mind and that was to build up my brand new 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds nice. And turn this thing into the most badass Jeep I've ever built. After we put the lift on and the 40s, we had to completely outfit this thing with all sorts of Moto Belt goodies. Front and rear bumpers. I'm excited to see how this looks. Fender flares, rock sliders, and a bunch of other really cool mods. Duro cred. We don't know how to wheel, but we know how to wrench. And at first, you guys pretty much thought we were insane for doing this. If this part is already kind of making you nervous, I probably wouldn't continue. But in our eyes, this was the mecca of Jeep. This was a 392. So why not go crazy? Because we could do it on this type of build. And out of this entire build, all the parts we installed, all the craziness going on with this Jeep, there was one part that you guys absolutely had the most to say about. No one's ever done this before on a JL. And that was the Moto Belt drop down tailgate for the JL. We just knew as soon as we saw the prototype at Daytona Jeep Beach, it had to be on the 392. This combined with their brand new tailgates just really had to solidify what this Jeep was going to become. And you know, after we got it installed, really fine tuned it because on a body panel, you've got to fix the gaps. You've got to make sure it lines up perfect and it functions. Boy, oh boy, it shows this was the centerpiece. Everyone just wanted to check out and see in person. They wanted to see how it looked, how it functioned, how it performed and what our thoughts were on it. But if there was one thing you guys were not so nice about online, it was the color of the tailgate. Including Ryan, he's like, I think that would look better. Give me crap as we're driving down to New Jersey. <laughs> oh, big guy, your tailgate <laughs> looks like crap. This tailgate was not bikini and it was powder coated in the silver. You know, initially the plan was get everything to be two-tone. Even had some comments about the two-tone, the silver ruin, the Jeep, the powder coat color, but that's something that I wanted to do, a two-tone build and something we actually got a lot of ideas from Jeep conversion solutions they had a lot of two-tone jeeps down in daytona and i thought on the 392 it would look fantastic and you know when you're doing all that together when you're getting everything powder coated i thought it would look cool i thought the two-tone might might look cool throughout the entire jeep and it did about 95 percent of the way until you got to the rear end and i think the last call was when my wife actually commented on it and said your tailgate sucks is trying to fix it really <laughs> so there was just one thing left to do and that was to get it painted. You just do it. <laughs> yeah, just full, yeah, full send. But there was only one giant massive problem. The only paint shop that we trust to work on our Jeeps, you know them better as Distinction Applied, was over 1,000 miles away in a small city called Hernando, Florida. Now, getting a Jeep down to Florida isn't too difficult, but driving a Jeep on 40s for a short weekend trip, when the average time to get there from our address is 16 hours, is a little bit tricky. We had a lot going on, and this one just went on the back burner. So after a few months and all those shows and all the fun times, we actually had a lot going on behind the scenes. Dirt Road Creed will be here on Friday. <laughs> and after the two years of working with Distinction Applied, we've pretty much become family with them. And we actually were offered a, a pretty exciting opportunity to work with Brian and do some marketing and things for him on the back end. Now, culminating all of this together, we have a 392 that we want to get parts painted for. We've got an exciting brand new opportunity to collaborate directly with Distinction Applied. And then in the midst of all that, we picked up a brand new 2025 Jeep Wrangler, which a little bit of the cat out of the bag. Part of that or a good percentage of the decision to purchase that vehicle was because of this new exciting adventure, a new project to start creating content for Distinction Applied and having a new platform to build that on. And while we had to do all of this, <laughs> that chair already just hurt doing that. We knew that we needed to make one more trip down to Florida before the end of this year. Right, right now. So we wanted to see just how many parts we could fit in the back of my mom's Ram 1500 to try and have them painted in the short few days, <laughs> nearly a week that we were down 
in Florida. And this might be our only opportunity to bring all of this down, get it painted, and then bring it back. And spoiler alert, we're not just getting the tailgate done. I decided last minute, one day prior to leaving, that I was gonna rip off all four of my fender flares, pull the rock slider skins off, and then pull the body skins off, and have just a couple more pieces painted. And probably the entire drive down, I just kept thinking to myself, would they have enough time to complete all this? Of course they would, it's distinction applied. We could not believe the amount of progress that they had seemingly made overnight. All right guys, let's go check out some cool stuff over here. This is where kind of more of the magic happens. So Ryan, follow me in here, check this out. We've got fenders in here, in here on the left, kind of see in there. And then one of the coolest pieces is gonna be over here. Check it out. I think this has got the first coat of clear coat on it, if I'm not mistaken. It's gonna get a second coat, buffed, wet sanded, all that fun stuff. But we got the tailgate done, fender flares done, we got some spacers done, and we've got a couple other custom accents that are getting done. But this one you can see, it's got all the clear coat on it too now. So I can't wait to get these home and put them on the Jeep. It's gonna look so much better. Everyone wanted me to do this, everyone was complaining. And I, the biggest thing for me was probably the tailgate. The tailgate looked pretty rough, so being all silver, it was just a huge body panel. And when you look at the back of the Jeep, it was like bikini and then this giant silver plate. With this being bikini and then just, the, we got the tops of the fenders done. So if you look here, that's all tape in there. So the tops of the fenders are going to be bikini blue and then the whole inside will be silver to kind of follow along. And then with the rocker skins, you can see those are right here. So we've got kind of those sitting here and what we've done on those is just done the rockers, like the body side skin, but then the rest of it will still be silver on the outside. So that way, when we beat up that section, I can still pull it off and just get that repowder coated instead of doing, messing up body color. You don't want to mess up body color on stuff. So I can't wait to get this home to PA and install it. Everything came off nice because we put enough anti seize on everything. So we ripped it off, it's here. They will do custom work like that. So that's one thing, distinction applied, like you call Brian, you talk to them, they will do custom work like this. It's just, you gotta tell them what you wanna do, you know? We have something custom getting worked on right now. We have uh, like five boxes, 10 boxes worth of custom things that are getting, not bikini though, they're a different color. So we can't talk about it yet. You guys will see it soon, but this is just the one or few parts that you guys needed to see paint matched. Everyone said, this is the biggest one. Everyone said, do the tailgate. No one really cared as much about the fenders. A lot of people said they hated the silver, but then they saw it in person and they were like, all right, that looks sick. But with this done, it's gonna transform the entire Jeep. When we get back, it's gonna be crazy. Everything that they do is thought out. It's, co it's efficient, it works very well. And their entire team worked their butts off to make sure that we would be getting back in our truck and heading home with all of our parts. But on the final morning, the clock was ticking. We had a train to catch, quite literally. So as we arrived and brought donuts for the crew there. Donuts for the last day. We're looking around, seeing Brian even throw an apron on to start buffing. You're working for us now, Brian. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of parts to put in the back of the truck and make a safe return as well. If you guys have ever played the game Tetris, you know just how hard it is sometimes to fit awkward objects, especially into a truck bed and especially freshly painted parts that just needed to get home safely. Give Matt something to do. And I even had my hand in doing some packaging as well to make sure that this could get done as well as to let the guys continue to work out back while I wrapped it up and got it ready for the thousand plus mile return trip home. These are gonna look sick. Now the internet can see what's wrong with my head too. <laughs> Ryan and I got into it. We got, we got, we were fighting. Yeah, we were fighting. Fight club. Well, somehow we managed to get everything done. We got the parts painted. We added some new products into the back of our truck and we brought home a couple surprises as well, including probably a hundred plus videos that we shot for the back end of Brian and his team's pages, but you'll have to stay tuned for that content. We said our goodbyes to Brian and his team and said, we've got a train to catch. We arrived at the train probably 10 minutes before the cutoff to have your truck loaded onto the car carriers, waited for our boarding station to be called, and then climbed on and realized that we had some pretty interesting sleeping quarters for the next 18 hours on it. But after all of the train ride amenities, we knew that we had to get a little bit of rest so we could come back the next day and make this Jeep look like a brand new vehicle again.
I like the blue one. The Jeep is put back together and I couldn't be happier. It looks night and day different. It is, uh, it's insane. You know, I think with just the theme that we were going for, just giving that color accent by being subtle yet though too, you know what I mean? Not coloring everything because if we did the sliders in blue and all that, I think it would have been too much, but the tops of the fenders, the body side of the sliders and then the back there, it really just kind of like finishes the Jeep. I think some of you guys were right. You know, the fenders were a little bit much just being all silver like that. There was a lot of silver on the vehicle and I think it was at some point, as much as I love all the silver, it was a little bit overkill and it kind of took away from the classiness of like the stock color matched everything. Cause you gotta remember on a 392, everything comes color matched from the factory. And then we started adding on a lot of other bits like the distinction applied handles and all that other stuff. So when you're going, you're kind of fighting with colors, you know, but yeah, look at, look at how insane all of this turned out. The only thing I would say would adjust it a little bit would probably be on the rear end right here. You can almost hear when it was sucking it in a little bit of the paint on there was like, you know, like it was just touching a little bit compared to just the powder coat. Cause it, had, it is adding on some thickness on there, but nothing, nothing crazy. Now it's, uh, you know, obviously I just wanted to do everything nice and clean on there too, to make sure, cause everything has anti-seize on it as well. And you don't want to get that on fresh bikini paint, but you don't notice it until you do. Like now looking at the Jeep looks like crazy cool. The back though, that's what everyone was talking about. And don't worry, I, uh, I was gonna get these painted too, the little cover here's, but I was too rough on the bottom one again and snapped it off. So I have another one. Bobby, shout out to Bobby Cox, the Bobby Cox from Motobilt for sending us up a couple sets. But yeah, look at look at the tailgate. Yeah. I mean, and we'll pull it forward too. So Ryan, so you can see a little bit better, but it is just, I think I didn't get to see it outside yet. This was the first time I pulled it out of the shop, got it outside and when I saw it, I was just like. What is your opinion on this being bikini now? I I think maybe it could have done an accent because you see the motorbuilt plate, we did gold behind there. Yeah. And then if you look in here, there's a little gold around this trim. Because I think it almost like... It kind of just blends. It sandwiches your license plate a little bit with it. But it's nice because you have some accent from the stainless steel bolts, like we got those. And then everyone gave me grief because I use black oxide bolts. Remember these rusted? So the black oxide bolts, anywhere in PA, you gotta remember the first trip we took with this was to New Jersey Jeep Invasion and it was on the beach like getting salt and sand. So it was, it started to corrode. Black oxide bolts do that. So we swapped those out with stainless. I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm just pumped to have it all back together. Cause once again, I, I, I hate when the Jeep is just down. Like, and you can get crazy with one of these builds to where I've seen guys with TJs, YJs and that Ryan, where they're just like, it's never out of the garage because you just keep building it and you're not enjoying it, you know? Yeah. So this one, we're just excited to get it back to being able to cruise on the road. But yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the walk around here, everything was well, well worth it. Worth the time, worth the energy. And then of course, like all that custom paint work from Distinction Applied. What does the wife think of it now? She likes it. Yeah, I think a little bit better than the uh, than the, the silver in the back there. And also Walker came over and he loves the blue. We'll have to wait till Cooper gets a little bit bigger and then he'll start giving his opinion too. But <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm thrilled with it. And uh, I don't know, I just, it kind of gives me back to like when I first picked it up, how the fenders were color matched and that, and it doesn't seem, I don't know. I, it's weird to explain, right? That's just what we wanted, you know? Yeah. We also kind of wanted to keep this silver in here. We have some future plans about maybe what we want to do to it, but you can already see the dents and scratches on this thing. This piece gets beat up, so I don't think being a high gloss paint. My dog, actually, Onyx, the German Shepherd, she tried to jump in the back, got like one claw here and like <laughs> fell backwards. She was fine, but like it left like the whole like yeah. drag on here. That's what those are from right there. But yeah, I think uh, I think leaving that silver, but of course, Brian was like, yeah, let's do an extra touch and actually paint all the inside here because I, initially I wasn't gonna have any of that done, just the border, but he was like, let's paint it up to that edge. That way, when you put this panel back on, it looks seamless. I mean, every one of these builds is personal and this is probably the, well, this is the most biggest and badass Jeep that I've ever built. Yeah. And now it's just getting to the point of like, just, I think really dialing it in. That's where we were kind of at. Like you get a bill, you get it cruising around, the thing looks insane. And then you kind of break it back down and just, 
do it over again or just kind of finish it up because you got to remember like if we were to try and paint match all this stuff and do it all while we were trying to do the build this would have never been at any shows over the summer it would have just sat in the garage here and then at that token it's also just taking up garage space and shop space yeah then nothing else gets pulled in so i mean it's been a year and this is kind of what it turns into so what's next is that 25 inside <laughs> that we get to play with but like, I miss driving this. Yeah, the 25 is awesome. It's a two door, it's super small. It's super, like it drives like a, a little car rolling around. But then you hop in this and fire up the Hemi and it's like, yeah, yeah that's. But you guys let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you were one of those guys that ripped me apart when it was silver, do you like it better now that it was bikini? Or do you think I should have kept it the silver? I think paints are so subjective that everyone has a different opinion. You should have done it black. You should have done it this. You should have painted it. 392 gold but this is what i wanted this is what we went with and we're just super excited to show you guys once again a huge shout out to brian his entire team at distinction applied without them this would have not been possible for all of these paint match parts and look at how insane that it looks but anyways drop a comment down below this has been a long time coming i'm excited ryan's excited to bring this to you on the channel and uh yeah we hope you enjoyed this video if you don't mind give us a like maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along with this build with ryan's two-door with our new two-door with dad's four-door out front who knows what other g products we might pick up too so we've got a lot going on until next time though my name is matt with dirt road Ryan's behind the camera, and we want you to get out there and earn yours.